This is the third video in a series of videos in which I will be offering tips and tricks for rendering beautiful human anatomy using pen and ink stipple technique. In this video, I'll be going a little more in depth on the eyeball and the muscles of the chest. The non-sponsored materials I'll be using in this series of videos will be uh, the Coronor Rapidographs with the Ultra Draw ink, a kneaded eraser, a Sakura electric eraser, a Pentel 0.5 mechanical pencil, the Windsor Newton Series 7 brush, a size 2 or 3, Talon's Indian ink, and the paper is a Strathmore Bristol 500 series. I'm actually drawing on the plate surface, which is smooth. This is depicting the vellum surface. It's got a little more tooth to it. You can also use uh, crow quill dip pens if you prefer, and or the more modern uh, micron pens. They're very popular nowadays. But whatever you want to use, it's fine. There's no right or wrong. Just do what you prefer. All right, our progress so far. We've got a lot of the uh, stipple. And now we're going to um, take a very small double zero rapidograph and fade things together a little better. Now, to get the values correct, you probably want to look at the whole picture and uh, squint your eyes. This will give you a good representation of what has to be darkened. get the bounce out of this paper, redirect my lighting so I don't put a shadow on things, or worse shadow. I'll be speeding up the video, but make sure you work slowly and precisely with even pressure on your dots. The stipple dots I'm applying are not in a straight line. I'm sporadically placing dots next to each other. But if you do a straight line, the stipple will appear too dark and it won't render well as you blend values. I'm working the whole upper arm here, from the tricep to the bicep, slowly darkening to make sure I get my values correct and the values merge well from dark to light. There are many different ways to darken the values. Here, all I'm doing is adding more small dots, more concentration of small dots, and obviously fewer dots as the values lighten. Squinting down now, and I'm comparing my shadowed areas in her bicep to my photograph. As I squint down, I realize that the highlight on the inside of the bicep needs to be a little darker. That'll help the highlight look brighter. And this highlight's very bright. So I'm just gonna use very light dots and I'm gonna slowly darken that up. Okay, so I've added more small dots here. I'm squinting. I see I need a little more gradation in the arm coming up to where the highlight is in the bicep. Another way of darkening your values using stipple is just to use a larger diameter dot or a larger pen. Parts of this video I'll be doing that, but right here I want a subtle gradation, so I'm sticking all with the same size dots.
I'm pausing, I'm checking my values. I see in my picture, it gets darker right here in this part of the wrist. It comes a little bit higher. I'm gonna apply that with small dots to this one, to this one now. Now it's time to move on to the hand. Starting with the shadow between the hand and the forehead, and we'll move up the arm from there. Working human anatomy using stipple, you'll get the best effect if you slowly build up your values. Constantly comparing the values of your stipple to the reference photograph. I like pretty much the way this arm is at the moment. Now I'm going to go into the face and start getting more of the uh, values placed into there. So let's discuss the eyeball. The eyeball is a sphere. Um, unfortunately, when people draw the eyeball, they seem to disregard that fact. Now, in this picture, our model, her eyes aren't open all the way. So, this would be considered the eyeball. This is the bones of the skeleton. Okay, so, with her eyelids almost closed. There is going to be a lot of the sphere showing. This is going to cause the shadow from the light hitting it. Our light source coming here. To cause a shadow just the same way it would be if it was on a baseball lit directly down the center. So let's make sure the highlight is hitting the center of the eyeball where it protrudes. Now let's see what it looks like when we're applying this to our model. The eyelids are covering the eyeball. Make sure that you show the highlight of the eyelid as it goes over the round shape of the eyeball. Right now, I'm shading in where the uh, clavicle attaches to the uh, pectoral muscle and gets a little bit of shadow going down the sternum. In this position, it's all one smooth transition. Let's take a look at the uh, chest muscles and how its shape is formed by what's underneath the skin. Um, let's pretend this is the clavicle. And uh, underneath the clavicle is the sternum. You have the deltoid coming up. This would be the bicep in here. The chest muscles attach over here like this. They also have come down in here. So they're attached to your sternum. They're attached to your clavicle. This part of the chest is an indentation usually seen in shadow. And that separates the pectoral from the deltoid. 
and roughly the nipple would be right about here underneath any of the fat pads. I am now shading the uh, values around the highlight on the deltoid. As I shade these values in, the highlighted deltoid will become uh, more evident and more three-dimensional looking. This highlight is actually the humerus bone protruding underneath the flesh. Remember that the little divot between the pectoral muscle and the deltoid has to be just a few shades darker. This will give roundness to the chest and make it look more three-dimensional. Now I'm starting the abdominal region. The stomach has many peaks and valleys caused by fat, muscle, bones, as the light crosses this region, we'll find a beautiful rhythm of highlights and shadows. If you're having trouble with this area, double check your placement of your highlights and shadows and the placement of the belly button. If this video has been helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you know somebody who could benefit from this information, please share. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Also note that because of some technical difficulties, this series will not be posted in chronological order, and any misspelled words are a product of the failure of the American educational system and technology of autocorrect. This is our progress so far. In the following videos, we'll be showing how we merge our values closer together and come up with our final product. Thanks for watching.